Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 16 for the 2016 to 2017 academic year with me Craig Barton. Now this resource here is ideal I would say firstly for any year 12 students that you've got possibly studying for core one um, or if you've got GCSE students and I'm probably talking about the highest achieving students here who are working towards the new GCSE summer 2017. It's perfect for those students and it's called AS Coordinate Geometry Group Cards and it has been uploaded by the wonderful Jelly Maths who produces some fantastic resources and it's a really simple looking resource but we tried this with our year 12s and flipping heck it was good really effective so it is a pdf let me just show it you here um and it, it's essentially a pdf that's a that's a lesson so it starts off with a with a starter and we just bang this up on the board there's point a there's point b can students work out the midpoint gradient, the length and the perpendicular gradient? Now, this is what I mean about this being suitable for GCSE as well, because they are all skills that students will be expected to be able to do on the higher tier paper. So perfect for that. But crucially for our A-level students, these are the kind of basic skills that are going to form an integral part of the more applied style questions that students often get on the core one exam. So bang that up on the board. And if your year 12s are anything like mine, they didn't have a flipping clue what was going on. So that was perfect though, because it gave us opportunity to talk about it, um, opportunity to discuss strategies, compare answers and so on. I also, as I always do with anything coordinate geometry, I fire up Desmos, I plot those points in, we have a look, is there any way our answer can possibly make sense for midpoint how do I know it's definitely wrong is the gradient going to be positive or negative is it going to be bigger than one less than one all this kind of stuff so we chatted through all that that took about 20 minutes and then look at this perfect and then had these cards available so what I did is I printed these out on a on A4. Some of the kids love getting the scissors out, so they cut these out, stuck them in the book, and then they had these as reference points. So by the time we'd finished this bit and done the starter, I was fairly confident that the students had the basic skills um, in place ready to do the more applied thing. Now with GCSE students, depending on the class, I may stop at that stage, but I also may give them the next activity as well because it's all good stuff. So what is the next activity I hear you say? Well, here it is here. It's a load of challenges all based around this same, uh, same set of four points. A, B, C, D are plotted on a graph. Prove they form a rhombus. Now flipping heck. So students given that are like, what on earth do I need to do? But all the skills they need are covered by this. That's the absolute beauty of this. So they're going to need some little help. They're going to need some um, structure and so on. And that's the beauty of these cards on the right hand side. They all have um, kind of little hints with them and so on, just to kind of help the students along if they need it. Um, and then it moves on to the next bit. Find the area of the rhombus formed by joining those. So how on earth are students going to find the area? Which one of those skills is going to help with this and so on? Then let's go step it up a little bit. Prove the diagonals of the rhombus of perpendicular bisectors. How are the students going to do that? Think of all the skills that are coming into play here. And then this one now. God almighty, I've been thinking about this one myself. Is it possible to draw one circle which passes through all four coordinates? Whew tricky but doable and involves a lovely piece of mathematics so in those four questions think how much stuff is covered there beautiful um, now in terms of a tip for for going through this with students some students are going to need more structure and more guidance than this so maybe you want to jot down a few extra notes and have that available i'd certainly have those students working in pairs i think works lends itself quite well to this and then I'd either use my counter technique where students can exchange a counter for five minutes on Desmos or two minutes on Desmos or so on. Or if you allowed it in your school, I'd be very tempted simply to let the students use Desmos on their phone because this lends itself so well to being able to visualize things. Desmos isn't going to give them the answer. So it's not as if they're cheating, but it's going to let them check their answers. It's going to help them visualize and make it a bit more of a tangible experience for them. So if if you can get away with letting students use their phone, get them downloading the Desmos app, it's all completely free, um, and get them using it for this. I think it's superb for that. 
And then of course go through it on Desmos as well at the end. And then if you're thinking, can, can life get any better than this? Well, there's just one final little task here, which is lovely. Pick any three coordinates, find the equation of the perpendicular bisectors uh, through each of them, find where they intersect, and what do you notice? A lovely open-ended investigation for the students to take on. Um, again, lends itself work nicely to working in pairs or maybe groups of four. Students in groups could all pick three different coordinates, then compare their answers, check each other's answers and so on, and come up with some hypotheses about what's going on. Whew, what a lovely resource. I was a massive fan of that. So I hope you agree that it's, a, that it's a classic. If you use it, hop back on this resource page and just share your thanks with the author. And I will see you for a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.